Today, I've got a problem from the University of Cambridge's uh, entrance exam. So it's called STEP, and this is from last year. We have a function g from 0, 1 to the reals, and it satisfies this equation here, that the integral from 0 to 1 of g of x squared dx equals the integral from 0 to 1 of g of root x dx minus 1 third. We want to find the function g of x. So this is kind of remarkable. All we're told is like kind of what the area underneath this curve is between zero and one. It just so happens to equal the area under this curve minus a third. And somehow from that, we're able to determine uniquely what g of x is. So the way we're going to do this is by doing a little substitution to begin with. We're going to look at this integral here. And well, it's got a root x in it. So I kind of maybe want to have that as just g of x. And now maybe, maybe one thing I should say is that this isn't the actual, the whole problem. This is just one part of the problem. So there may be other clues in other parts of the problem, which I haven't given here. But nonetheless, I think it's still pretty solvable and it's quite a nice solution. Uh, let me call this integral here alpha. And what we're going to do is do a little substitution. So we're going to say u equals root x. And so we get du is 1 over 2 root x dx. And so this integral alpha just becomes the integral from, well, when x is 0, u is going to be the square root of 0, which is 0. And when x is 1, u will be the square root of 1, which is 1. Now, g of root x is just going to be g of u. And then dx here, if you rearrange this, will become 2 root x du. What is root x? Root x is just u. So this is g of u times 2u du, like so. And now what I'm going to do is just replace the u's with x's. So this is 2x g of x dx. And you might ask, well, how can I do that? Why am I allowed to do that? Well, fundamentally here, u is just a dummy variable. Because we've got a definite integral, if I was to evaluate this, I'd find the antiderivative and then sub in 1 and sub in 0. That's exactly what I'm going to get if I find the antiderivative of this integral and then sub in x is 1 and x is 0. So these two guys are 100% the same thing. OK, well, how can I use this then to help me? Well, I notice I've got g of x squared, and I've also got 2x g of x. And that kind of reminds me of if I had g of x minus x and I squared it. So what I'm going to do is consider the integral of this from 0 to 1 dx. And so if I just expand that integral, that's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of g of x squared minus 2x g of x dx plus, oh, sorry, not dx, plus x squared all of that dx. But now, g of x squared, the integral from 0 to 1 of that, is this thing here, alpha minus a third. Then I've got minus two, the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x g of x. But that's exactly what we have here. And we know that that's alpha. So we've got minus alpha there. And then we've got plus the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. And you can just evaluate that. That's going to be 1 third. And kind of remarkably, alpha minus a third minus alpha plus a third is zero. This is really, really nice. So we get the integral from naught to one of this thing here, dx, is zero. Now, what's really nice about this is that this function is non-negative. It's something squared. g of x is a real function. x is a real function. So if I take them away from each other, that's still a real function. So if I square a real function, the resulting function is going to be non-negative. So this thing here is at least zero for every single value of x. And so because we're integrating it from 0 to 1 and we're getting zero, it must be that the inside is zero. Because if at any point it's bigger than zero, the integral of it, so if I just maybe draw a little sketch here, if the function ever went above the x-axis, the integral would be slightly positive. But since the integral is exactly zero, the graph must be a complete horizontal line on the x-axis there between 0 and 1. And so we get g of x minus x is identically 0. And so therefore, g of x must equal x. So g of x is just the linear function x. And that there solves our problem.